record on this computer. Maybe a little bit before we're able to answer it. The first thing on the agenda is Zoom etiquette and some privacy issues with Zoom. So one of the, a lot of people have been using Zoom recently. I know I used it a couple of times in my venture crew, but it's becoming the main platform that people are using. Later in Roundtable, I'm going to cover a couple of other platforms other than Zoom that you can use for video chatting and meetings but it seems as though Zoom is the most popular. Recently, Zoom has had some privacy concerns where people are doing what's called Zoom bombing, which is where someone gets a hold of a meeting link that they are not supposed to have and then goes into another meeting and uses that to show things that are not generally appropriate. One way to go around this is to only share your Zoom link with who needs to have it. So if you are in a troop, you only share it with leaders, parents, and scouts. One thing that you can also do with Zoom is set a meeting password. So if someone, what I've noticed when I use it is if I am just typing in the meeting ID and not using the actual link, it will prompt you for a password. One thing that my own troop is doing is sending the meeting link and the meeting ID separately from the password. One thing that, also, that Zoom also does, which they recommend that you do, is use what's called a waiting room. When you join Zoom specifically, typically um, participants will enter a waiting room and then whoever is hosting the meeting will have to approve them to be admitted. This means that if there's someone that you don't recognize who's attempting to get into your meeting, that's one thing that you can do uh, to reject that person and then see if someone knows who that person is. So those are all ways that you can keep your meeting secure and not have people who aren't supposed to be in your meetings join your meeting. One thing with uh, like video chatting etiquette, one thing that I've had all the presenters do here is to mute themselves unless they are presenting this means that there's a reduction in background noise and things like that. One of the other things that some people will also do is um, use the chat box. Zoom, speci Zoom specifically has a chat function that is helpful if you're trying to, if someone's like not muted and you want to send them a message to say, hey, you're not muted, can you mute without actually saying that. Um, I do believe that there is a way to disable the chat if it is a distraction, but it's also a way to have people talk between, like I will use it to say who's up next when I'm not presenting. So next is announcements. You are welcome to sing the announcement song if you would like. There are a couple of announcements that are council-wide that I want to go over. The first one is that in May there was supposed to be a council campery. It was Spartan themed and going to be held in Lindenville. This has been postponed one year. So this will happen, that campery will happen in 2021. The other one is that IOLS Introduction to Outdoor Leader Skills has been rescheduled to September 25th through 26th. There is, if you need to take that course, there is still room to sign up and there is registration information on the council website. Up next, we have summer camp updates from Clint Buxton, Judy McCollin, and Dave Sem. Okay, we will, uh, I guess I'll go first just to give you a larger perspective on the camps first. Um, as everyone saw, we are, uh, we are working closely on our camping committee, especially with our resident camp directors and day camps to uh, obviously monitor the current health situation that we have. We are, participating in several webinars that we've been getting national guidance from uh, Texas as to how to make decisions moving forward with regards to our camps. We are proceeding slowly 
and taking our uh, guidance a lot from state and national uh, authorities and health departments, CDC, following specific guidelines. We've put out two different notices so far with our council president incorporated into his messages that I'm sure he will probably be able to touch on next so that we are in line. As it stands right now, we are, I'll let Clint specifically talk to Norris, but all camps are still preparing um, and hopeful and working on our staff and training and starting to look at our procurement in the event that um, we are fortunate and still can move forward with camp. We've currently moved, our last announcement was on April 6th in the president's message about um, extending early bird deadline and campership application deadline to May 15th. And I suspect that at the end of this month, we will um, have further updates. We are proceeding slow um, following what's happening with our state and um, Right now, our priority continues to be on making sure that we can provide a healthy and safe summer camp experience for all of our scouts, staff, leaders, parents. So that's the official place where we're at. Um, Clint, do you wanna talk about uh, Mount North specifically? Absolutely. <clears throat> can you hear me all right? Okay, they can. So, uh, Kevin, if you can put up my slide, if that's a possibility, we'll see. Did you, uh, you emailed that to me? I did. Okay, give me one second here. I'm, I'm dealing it? with, um, for what it's worth, the, the feed has dropped twice so far. So I'm just, I'm monitoring the Facebook feed. Um, okay. So that's give me fine. just one second to pull that up. I, I can, um, I can kind of talk to it uh, anyways. It's just a, so, so as, as Dave indicated, I just wanted to um, let everyone know in a council um, uh, that we are proceeding with uh, um, our schedule of opening camp um, on schedule. Um, but I think it's very key, as Dave indicated, that of paramount importance, the overriding concern of our council and our camp is the health and safety of campers, um, leaders, and, and the staff. Um, so that's guiding us all, as, as David indicated, we are staying very close both nationally and locally to, um, to uh, get all the guidance we can. Uh, and that also includes our, our uh, medical uh, officer here in the council as well. He's tied in very tight with us. So that's a little bit, it's uh, 18, 40, a little bit on, uh, on the health and safety aspect of things. We are, uh, again, very, uh, very uh, closely watching all of that. Um, from a planning perspective, Mount Norris is, is continuing to, to uh, plan as the calendar suggests. Uh, we are 80 some odd days away from the scheduled opening of uh, resident camp at Mount Norris. Um, I am currently um, continuing to interview staff. I have many staff that have already committed. Um, um, Jacob and I just got off a uh, rather uh, I don't know, it must have been two to three hours of uh, taking a look at what we're going to order for the trading post uh, and uh, program supplies, those type of things. All, all those um, items are necessary in which to open camp. Um, so we're, we're paying very close attention to that. We're deeply engaged in, uh, in all things uh, preparing for camp. Uh, as Dave alluded to, uh, it, it's rather uh, helpful uh, that we're having national calls with, I think the last call we were on had about 585 people on it, camp directors, scout executives, and, and, uh, and um, all of that. So we're, um, we're tied in very closely with uh, the, the national folks on a weekly basis. Dave talked a little bit about the financial piece of it where we've um, tried to help in moving out early bird deadlines and, and those type of things. So hopefully that is helping uh, parents and unit leaders with, uh, with um, planning for camp. Um, and I guess the last thing I just uh, kind of go along with uh, the, the topic is, you know, we have pre-camp leader meetings that both myself and, and John Dyer, um, uh, from Camp Sunrise hold each and every spring. Um, I, I've scheduled four of those. The first one I have is actually this Thursday evening. Um, so uh, we're still moving forward with that and, um, 
in, in ensuring that we get all the information out to leaders as, as quickly as possible. So a lot of stuff going on in the background um, that we're, we're attempting to get done. Um, I'm also continuing to, to hire staff. Um, just a, a quick plug, I may, mentioned this at the Ethan Allen Roundtable uh, last week. I'm still looking for some uh, kitchen staff, a head chef and whatnot. So if you know of anybody that's out there that might uh, be interested, please, uh, please pass that information on to me. So that's uh, pretty much what's going on at Mount Norris. And uh, I guess I will give it to either Judy or Dave for the next uh, presentation. Next up is Judy with um, Cub Scout updates. If, if I can, if I can jump in real quick before, um, I think it's Judy's trying to unmute, I think. Okay. Uh, Camp Sunrise is in the same position that Mount Norris is in. I think as we all know, John and Tom down there, um, we continue to communicate with John. John works, is working heavy hours at Rutland Regional. Uh, we continue to keep him and all of our other first responders. John is uh, working closely with us uh, with regards to Camp Sunrise. And um, one thing that we will circle back on with all of our resident camps, we are still taking reservations. I think we, got a, we still got a Frontiers Camp reservation last week. We encourage reservations. But at the same time that we extended early birds, we want to communicate to families that uh, in the event we are not able to run camp and have to cancel, um, that we will be refunding payments, including deposits, to families. Uh, people should feel comfortable making reservations for camp, that their money will not be um, lost. It helps us as a camp staff continue to know what reservations look like as campers continue to, and parents and leaders continue to keep showing up. But they sh everybody should feel comfortable <coughs> moving forward that their um, reservations are safe and the refunds would be available. So if you can continue just to communicate with your families, we are, we are monitoring a whole bunch of issues with regards to our resident camps. We, are, we have our finger on the pulse. We are very pleased as a council that um, all of the things that are coming up on our national webinars, I assure you that we've identified and we're monitoring and we're gonna go one step at a time. Right now, the priority is keeping everybody safe uh, right now. And I suspect at the end of the month, when we have a little bit more guidance as to what is happening in Vermont and what the future might look like for the backside of the curve as we start to come out of this, we'll have more guidance. But right now we are still planning and we have to plan. We have to be prepared for camp. And okay, thank you. Uh, Judy, do you have I, I have nothing further to say as far as resident camp. I think Dave covered that very nicely. I will say that we are still taking reservations for the day camp, which will be held in June um, at Camp Johnson. As Allison's health and safety officer for that, I am working diligently to make sure that we have good hand washing stations and such because we're not in a building that's got running water. So we're trying to work um, that out and it's even more important now. Um, the state does call me twice a day from my EMT service and tells these things. So it would not surprise me that even for resident camp and the day camps, if we're not going to be asked to wear the fabric mask. So you might want to be warning your families and the scouts that they may have to wear those. Um, some scouts are not going to tolerate them well, just, just to keep that in mind for what we have to do. And if there's any questions on day camp or Cub Adventure, Send it to the Facebook. I have to go to a church meeting, but Kevin is just in the other room and he can pat out and ask me the questions. Okay, I'm done, Shani. So, and I gotta go to the church meeting that uh, I'm running. Okay, we do have one question from Facebook about camp. Um, question is, when is the next round of camp-related updates available? So. I think when, as a, as a committee, we've worked with our, um, you know, with Dave McAllister and Ed and our council health officer. I think we will be looking at the end of April 
so probably the end of next week, which will put us about two weeks out away from our state's uh, current lockdown. And we are pre preparing for camp, um, but we're just going to continue to keep waiting to see what our guidance looks like. So far, the two updates have fallen in line, and I think we just need to see what the data tells us. We are not in a position yet to give medical suggestions as to what we think the situation will look like. Um, we haven't even begun to look at that yet because we're still in that upper, still in that state of we're in a lockdown, um, and we will see what um, where we progress. So I would think that by the around the end of April, you should suspect you should expect a uh, another communication from us. Okay, thank you. Hopefully um, that answered the question. Okay, up next we have, oh, hold on a second. Good, nope. Um, we have an advancement update from Ken Bell. Ken, you are still muted. There, can you hear me now? Yes. So a couple quick things on, on advancement. Um, obviously, advancement is extremely important to keeping the units uh, busy and, and moving forward, as well as keeping the scouts' interest in the program strong. Um, we're, we're doing a lot to try and get communications out there. Thanks to Leslie Sanborn, uh, we do have some links on the council website now uh, with ideas around how you can bring program uh, specifically around advancement to your units. Um, really encourage you guys to think outside the box with, with getting program out there. Um, there's lots of different ways to do it. Uh, I understand, you know, throughout the state, things like uh, virtual meetings may be a bit of a challenge in some areas, uh, but really encourage the virtual meeting process. Um, a lot of units are doing it now. Uh, it can be very successful with a little bit of planning. Um, and, and just, uh, it's amazing uh, what we have seen with uh, the scouts and how engaged they are in the process. Um, keeping their interest involved. Uh, you know, we, we're running virtual troop meetings. Uh, I know some PACs are running virtual PAC meetings. Um, advancement as far as merit badges can be done virtually. I know a number of units that are doing that. Um, I know Andrew will probably talk a little bit about that when he gives his speech. Uh, but um, really the opportunity is there. Uh, as far as advancement goes, uh, the requirements are not changing. Um, we, we cannot uh, modify the requirements in any way. Uh, I know advancement for Cubs, they are allowing parents to continue to sign off an advancement through July, the end of July, uh, to keep advancement going. Um, within the units, uh, I really recommend the use of Scoutbook. Uh, it is a great tool for, for communicating, uh, looking at uh, uh, outstanding uh, requirements that are needed for rank, uh, access to merit badge counselor lists, uh, the ability for merit badge counselors to work with the scouts and get things signed off. Um, if you don't have Scoutbook up and going and you need some help, uh, feel free to reach out. We'll certainly sit down and see if we can't get you up and going there. But it's a, it's a really useful tool uh, to, to, to help advancement uh, along the path. Um, I've talked to a couple of units that are doing uh, virtual uh, boards of review for their scouts for rank advancement. Um, I know from an Eagle Scout perspective, uh, we, we did uh, send a communication out. Uh, one of the things that we're trying to uh, protect is the, the uh, experience of an Eagle Board of Review. While virtual is an option, uh, uh, we really want to, to give the scout that opportunity to be able to sit down and, and have a really nice conversation uh, around that process um, and, and uh, remember that. Uh, virtual does create some limitations for us around paperwork. And we really, like I said, want to preserve the importance of that Eagle Board of Review. It's not to say that we can't do a virtual Eagle Board of Review. If there are circumstances, we certainly will do that. All scouts that are sitting right now uh, as an Eagle candidate, whether it's trying to get their project approved or get an Eagle Board of Review scheduled, uh, there, there are extensions available. Uh, council has allowed, uh, or the National has allowed Council uh, to, to work with scouts to grant those extensions so that we can preserve that process and experience for them. Uh, we don't want to take anything away from the scouts that have been working so hard to, to get to that point in their journey. Um, uh, again, I, I don't, 
have anything else to say other than to really try to be creative and making sure you're getting that program going. Um, you can even do virtual uh, campouts. Uh, you know, encourage the kids to get out, uh, pitch a tent, sleep in it, cook some meals. They can do advancement. They don't have to be at a troop meeting to do that or a PAC meeting. There's a lot of opportunity. We have to use the resources we have to make sure that our scouts and our, our scout families are successful. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, Ken, for the advancement updates. Up next is an Order of the Arrow update from Mark Poulin. Okay, I think I'm unmuted. Can everyone hear me? Yes. So the OA has had to make some changes in how we do business to deal with this. So our election season normally starts on January 1st and ends April 30th through a couple decisions that were made, one through national and one here at the council level, that has changed. To date, uh, we have elected 16 total statewide into the OA. Elections are continuing. We're obviously not doing them in person at this time. So national at their meeting fairly recently gave permission through July 1st of this year virtual me meetings and elections can be held and we can get the instructions on to how to accomplish that out to you um, if you go to the Ajapo Lodge Facebook page all the instructions are already shared on there exactly what you need to do to host a virtual election you do have to get permissions from certain players um, the scoutmaster uh, some chapter advisors so on and so forth to make it happen but the procedure is very very simple to do it virtually on the other hand, if you don't want to do a virtual meeting, the Lodge has um, altered our rules in-house to allow for elections in person once we're allowed to do that up till August 15th, which is a number of months longer than we normally do. So once we are allowed to do in-person meetings, you can do an in-person election until August 15th. The important part of that is if you are going to summer camp, the troops that might not be meeting until they are at camp, you can do an election at summer camp as long as we get the, the proper players in place to do that. We have never done elections at summer camp for a very long time. So we're trying to give as much opportunity for elections as possible dealing with this mess. So the rules for election have not changed. It is still the 15 nights of camping in two years, five of which have to be at a long-term uh, summer camp type program. So those rules have not been waived. The minimum requirements are the same, but the election season started January 1, and it will continue through August 15th. July 1st is when the cutoff is for the virtual elections via Zoom meetings. So our first ordeal, which was scheduled weekend after next, the first weekend in May at Camp Sunrise has been canceled. That is not happening. Our next ordeal is scheduled the weekend of five, six, seven, June, four, five, six, something along those lines. Um, we still don't know if that is going to happen or not, so stay tuned. Um, you know as much as we do on what we may or may not be able to do uh, that close in from now. So we are hoping to have one, but this will be a question for our youth leadership to decide with only 16 candidates having been elected to date, we might have a really large fall ordeal. So the, the fall ordeal has been scheduled for September. That should happen, I would imagine, unless something changes drastically. For the handful of people out there who are attending NOAC, we had a conference call with our security staff for the national events uh, night before last, and as far as everything we are being told from national, NOAC is still occurring. They're having some question about numbers and attendance, but to this, this point anyways, today, um, NOAC is still happening. So if you have questions about setting up the virtual meetings, if you can't find the information on the Lodge Facebook page, send out an email to any of the chapter advisors. You can go to our website, www.ajapeu351.org and send an email to any of the advisors that are in the contact page and we can walk you through that process of how to conduct an election via Zoom. It is not that difficult and we are here for any other questions. On a side note, for those of you who are bored and sitting around with nothing better to do, the online store for Ajapo Lodge has officially opened. You can register for lodge events, you can purchase season passes, and for the patch collectors in the crowd, you can buy patches. So 
please go and check it out if you have nothing better to do while you're hanging out at home. Hey, thank you, Mark. Um, one thing I do want to put a plug in for, my troop did an election, an OA election via Zoom, and it worked very well. Highly was a good, we got some scouts got elected and I recommend it. We do have a question from Facebook about um, the fall ordeal. So what about doing a fall ordeal at sunrise? As far as the location goes of where that ordeal is gonna be, if you see our events page, it is still to be decided. Um, it all comes down to which camp needs more work come the end of the season. The monkey in the wrench this year um, is that we have received a national grant to build the John Record Memorial Nature Lodge at sunrise. And we were planning on doing a lot of the preparation and depending on if it was gonna be a prefab or stick built building of working on that at the, the spring ordeal. That is not happening now, so more than likely, it will have to be there this fall in order to get that project done. But that'll be for the youth to decide at our LEC in June. Whether we do that in person or virtually, we'll see. Okay, thank you. I do see one more uh, question. Would callouts happen at summer camp? So if we cannot do callouts in person, um, we were planning on doing a council-wide callout at the council-wide camporee. Obviously that is not happening. If elections and such are being done, more than likely OA callouts would be done on OA day being Wednesday at the camps. I don't see any reason why we could not do that. Okay. Um, one more question. Um, I believe this is with the sunrise ordeal. It's, um, it's with the, I'm guessing the sunrise ordeal being canceled. Will there be reimbursed? Oh, nope, never mind. It is a summer camp question. Well, one other quick point that I forgot. I'm just looking over my notes. The most interesting part that came out of the national meeting is candidates that are elected from January 1st through July 1st will have an extra year to complete their induction process. So if they are elected this year before Ju uh, July 1st, they do not have to complete an ordeal this year. We would prefer they do for record keeping. It'd be a lot easier for the lodge advisor, but they, if, as long as they attend one of the two spring ordeals next spring or the fall one this year, they can complete their induction. So national has allowed a little more leeway in completing the induction process. Okay, thank you, Mark. Up next, we have updates from our scout executive, Ed McCollin. Okay, can you guys hear me? Yes? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. And, uh, and Shannon and Kevin, thanks for setting this up. Really appreciate this. I hope we're streaming across the state and a lot of people are getting a chance to, uh, to hear what's going on in the Green Mountain Council. I'm gonna bounce across a, a couple different things. I'm gonna start with the Council Service Center. And our staff, uh, we are open as far as taking orders in a scout store. If you have an order you want to place for some sort of advancement or achievement, uh, just send an email to Laurie Sneed. That's laurie.sneed at scouting.org. I have the staff coming in in a rotating basis right now between uh, Arlene, who handles a lot of the field stuff. Janet's taking care of a lot of the camping and registration and advancement stuff. Uh, Judy comes in from time to time to do the inventory down in the store and to fill orders and get them back out of there. So we are kind of sort of opened. Uh, we haven't taken any walk-in customers. Uh, we do answer the phone. And so we're trying to eventually get back into business. Our office is set up that we're, we're pretty far apart anyhow. So the, the social distancing aspect has been, has been pretty good. It's worked pretty well. Uh, we did apply for the uh, payable protection program so we can keep our staff on board. Uh, as you might imagine, this is a very tough time for a business as far as uh, income and revenue flow. Uh, but we're getting through it and we're good for the next eight weeks and we have some plans moving forward to uh, continue after that eight week period is up. Uh, we are still hoping that summer camp is going to happen and Dave, uh, Clint, John, and you guys, thank you very much for stepping up and, and staying on top of this, uh, this whole camping operation. Dave Sen mentioned earlier, there are national seminars. I have to tell you that from a national perspective, they want nothing more than to have summer camps of some type. As you can imagine the impact, uh, scouting is gonna suffer if Philmont and the Sea Base and Northern Tier and, and, this, and the summit don't happen this summer. Uh, very, very difficult. As someone also mentioned about 
refunds, if there's no camp, uh, God forbid, we would refund money. Uh, we give troops an option of carrying it over. Uh, so there's a lot of things going on with that, but uh, we are now planning, as Dave mentioned, to have camp. May not look like camp you've seen before, but we're gonna run some sort of summer camp program, uh, if at all possible. So stay tuned on that. Uh, the other thing, Dave, uh, Sam, if I can just add on, that National's looking very closely at the medical forms and what kind of options that uh, are might be available for uh, scouts to come to camp with the medical form that will be acceptable to the Boy Scouts America and our state. So there's a, I think there's a conference tomorrow afternoon on that. We might get more information on what we can and can't do as far as accepting medical forms. And as Dave mentioned, uh, talking with our health officer on the whole uh, COVID thing and how we're going to protect our scouts and ensure parents that uh, they're coming to a safe camp that's going to be uh, very safe and healthy for their, their children. Um, May 2nd, uh, if you can, there's, I just I don't know a whole lot more about it, but there's going to be a national camp in. They're going to look at some sort of virtual camp that's going to be streamed across the country. And from my understanding is different councils are going to weigh in and, and, and do some sort of virtual camp and maybe have uh, local council troops and PACs uh, kind of buy into it if they're doing some sort of cooking thing or some sort of uh, program that's going to be able to tie into what a local troop can do as well or the local PAC can do in our own council. On that same note, I got an email today from the district chair of Ethan Allen District, Sean Therian. They're looking or asking if they can do a, a district sort of like camp in uh, sometime in May that uh, maybe they can stream across to council. So stay tuned on that. They don't have a date set. They're meeting, I think the district meeting is next Tuesday and they're gonna to try to iron out some plans on what they can do and put a program together. So that might be something that they might wanna spread out to the other districts and ask them to join in. So we're doing some things like that. Um, what else I got for you? Uh, again, back on the camp thing with no spring ordeal, uh, the Mountain Horse Alumni Association and those guys that normally go and get camp ready. If we get to go, if we get to go to have camp, I'm gonna put a, a plug in and a shout out to everybody that we're gonna to have to have some sort of work day uh, to get the camp set up, setting the tents up, getting the campsites ready, all the program stuff. There's a lot of work that usually gets done by the lodge uh, this time of the year to get our camps at least in a preparation standpoint and take a lot of pressure off the staff. We're gonna be, have their hands full, just kind of scrambling to get a program set to welcome the first batch of scouts when they come in. So stay tuned on that. Uh, the council has run a special COVID-19 link on our website, scouting.org, or scoutingvermont.org. Keep an eye on that. I'd ask everyone to take a look at that daily, a couple times a week, to see what's going on. Any updates that's going to happen related to COVID-19 and the Green Mountain Council, we're going to try to post on that. Good news and bad, information about merit badge classes, information about what's happening in the council, summer camps, activities, training, everything like that. We're going to put it all on there. So that'll be your go-to spot if you want to have questions about uh, anything that's happening in the council council operations. Um, 2021 National Scout Jamboree is definitely going to happen, <laughs> Lord willing. We have uh, right now we have about a troop and a quarter crew signed up right now. We'd like to expand that as much as we can. We're still accepting payments on that. All systems are grow or go on that. I know Russ Baker, the council uh, jamboree chair, has worked with his, some of his team on selecting the leadership for that, that uh, at least troop right now and quarter crew. Uh, so if you have people that are interested in the Jamboree, we're still accepting applications. You can sign up online to the Jamboree website and uh, more to come on that as the committee begins to, to work through the logistics of uh, how many troops we're gonna take uh, and all the, the, the due dates and, and things like that. So. Russ is your go-to guy, or you can also uh, contact the service center if you have information or questions about the National Scout Jamboree. Uh, the only other thing I would add is, you know, I, all things being equal, this time of the year is extremely busy for everybody. We had Weebles Scout Transition, we had the Council Camp Re coming up, we had IOLS coming up, we're cranking up summer camp, the, the spring ordeals, uh, this is a busy, busy time that has really set everyone back uh, a little bit. So hang in there. It's going to get better. Scouting is going to continue. Uh, everybody's in the same boat. I've talked to scout executives across the area. 
I've had Scott executive meetings with the national organization. Uh, there's no council immune from what's happening right now. We're all going to work through it. Uh, we're going to get, uh, we're going to come out better because of this. I think camp's going to happen in some capacity. Please encourage your parents and kids that we're going to have a safe camp and to get out there, get them out of the house, get them out in the fresh air, and get them back into what we do best. And that's our outdoor program. That's all I got. Okay. Thank you, Ed. Um... There are, uh, there's one question, but before that, um, one thing that for National Jamboree that we will mention, there are staff positions available for National Jamboree if you have an interest in being on the National Jamboree staff. I urge you to go look at the website and find out how to do that. There is one question, which is, is there a way to get new members registered into troops right now? We are hoping to get our new crossover scouts into scout books soon. Is there a way to do new registrations at the moment? Absolutely. Just send them in. Janet comes in uh, two, three times a week. She can process those applications. Or we do check the online registration from time to time. So she's, uh, she's going about catching up on that. But yeah. We will get all the scouts into the into the system as soon as we possibly can. Okay, thank you. Up next, we have um, some website uh, some updates about the council website from Leslie Sanborn, who is the council commissioner. Hi, everybody. I was going to say good to see you, but good to talk with you. <laughs> I hope you're all doing well through all of this. Um, mainly, what I wanted to to say, um, Ed has partially covered, we have created a new page on the council website for scouting at home. Um, I'm curating it at the moment and would welcome any additions that you folks discover in your, in your searches on the internet and uh, for your scouting projects. Uh, and I will just forward them to me and I will put them on this page to share with everyone. I'd urge you to to continually look at the COVID-19 fact sheet from National as they are updating that and it contains the kinds of website, uh, excuse me, the kinds of advancement um, changes that are being made temporarily to make that work. Um, one other comment I have based on that last question, I would warn you about crossing over your AOLs into the troop. Um, Scout book has in their forums said that once you cross your scout over, hub advancements cannot be recorded any longer. So be sure to record the AOL advancement and print out that or and submit that advancement report before you cross them over into a troop so that their cub record is intact. Um, other than that, my email's out there on the website. Most of you know me and have it. You know, if you have any um, questions or anything or, or need help from the commissioner service, please let me know. I'm available. Okay, thank you, Leslie, for that. Um, up next, we have some short presentations on the two main options for video conferencing. I'm going to talk about. We have already talked about Zoom a little bit, but there's a couple other, there's one main feature I want to talk about. Um, I have been using Zoom with my venture crew for about a year now because we have several members who are away at college and that's how we've been, have been able to get them into the meetings. Zoom though does have a pretty cool feature called breakout rooms, which my troop has been using to have different places for scouts to do merit badges. So last week we um, worked with, um, my mother and I worked on the first aid merit badge with a group of scouts while other things were going on. The other um, video conferencing thing I wanna talk about is Google's video conferencing, which is Google Hangouts. It, I've also seen it called Google Meets. Um, Google Hangouts is a free software that you can use to conduct meetings. I have, I've used it at the school where I teach. It works pretty well. Um, 
one con that I've noticed is my internet is not fantastic here in my apartment. And I've noticed it, especially with Google, it tends to lag more than Zoom does, but it does, it does what it needs to do. And you are able to um, have meetings through it. One other um, thing that I wanna talk about with Zoom um, is Zoom has multiple different ways that you can use it and some of it um, requires a subscription. I have the free version of Zoom and in order to do this, we are currently using a paid Zoom membership because the free version of Zoom cuts off after 40 minutes, which my crew's workaround is when our meeting gets cut off, we just start it again. But it can be difficult to get everyone back into the same Zoom link, um, which is why Google Hangouts is good because it's free. So both of those are the two main options that I've heard of or seen people using for virtual troop meetings, PAC meetings, DEN meetings, crew meetings, any scouting meeting. Um, if you have more questions about either platform, I urge you to sign up and try it and see which platform you like more. I've heard both ways that Google um, Hangouts is good and that Zoom is good. Up next, um, let me get my agenda back up. We have some, up, uh, some unit presentations on how units are um, having meetings and doing activities during this. So up first, we have Andrew Johnson from Troop 3752 out of Colchester. Hi folks. Um, so our troop has been, uh, excuse me, I didn't have my video going. Um, hi everybody. So uh, our troop has been working over the last few weeks uh, virtually using Zoom, and it's worked quite well for us. Um, one suggestion I would have when, uh, when your troop is using Zoom or any other kind of platform is anytime you've got multiple people that are talking, like when you say the Pledge of Allegiance or the Scout Oath or any of those kinds of things, um, make sure that only one person has their uh, sound on because otherwise they start to compete and it bounces back and forth and it does not work very well. Um, so keep everyone on mute except for the one person who's like leading the oath or law or whatever you're doing. Um, our troop's been doing great. Um, we've been focusing on uh, advancement for all of our new scouts because we have only a couple of older scouts and uh, most of our troop is crossing over into the troop. Um, so they have been focusing on the uh, requirements for the scout rank, and it's been a really great um, reminder what the scouts did during their Arrow of Light year. Um, we have older scouts doing most of the presentations, and they all decided they wanted to jump right into merit badges. So um, we have a communications merit badge we've been working on all as a troop. And several of the scouts have taken it on themselves to go out and find online merit badges that are happening with other councils. I know we've had some scouts use um, visit Central Florida Council, um, Piedmont Council, uh, the Minuteman Council, and uh, a couple of others that I can't think of off the top of my head. Um, so they've been using this time to work on merit badges on their own and to uh, work on them over Zoom. Um, so far, it's been a success. Um, there have been a couple of hiccups as far as logging into Zoom. So my suggestion would be to make a new Zoom meeting every time you meet, uh, because the while there is an option to have a reoccurring meeting, something that happens each week, uh, sometimes that link doesn't, uh, doesn't work after a couple of weeks. I have no idea why, but it seems to just not let some people in if it's been used a couple times. Um, so those are my suggestions. Yeah. Um, so again, Troop 3752, we've been meeting at, uh, our, our normal meeting location is at the St. Francis Xavier School. Um, if you have any girls who want to join scouting, please send them my way and uh, we'd love to grow our troop. Thank you very much. Hey, uh, thank you very much, Andrew, for 
stopping and talking about what your troop is doing. Up next, we have Chris Haggett from St. Johnsbury. How's everybody doing tonight? It's good to see everybody. Um, <clears throat> we've, PAC 007 has been doing a lot of uh, email traffic and a lot of Facebook traffic. Um, we have used Zoom as well. Um, we've been concentrating more on <clears throat> different awards outside of just the advancement type awards. Um, most of our scouts um, have already completed all the achievements they need to, um, to earn their rank. So I thought this was a great opportunity for us to have our scouts work on something at home that might give them an award that they wouldn't normally take the time to earn. So um, we've done things like had a Zoom meeting with our local game warden and uh, to help us work on a conservation award. And he has given our scouts the mission of building bat houses to help conserve the bats population in the area. Um, it seemed to be pretty good. We had a, a decent turnout for that meeting. Um, we haven't built the, our bat house yet, but uh, we will. <laughs> um, we've recently also used Zoom to have a, a leaders meeting, uh, which we thought was important. Hopefully this uh, COVID-19 thing is gonna start to come to an end. And so we wanted to have our leaders tracking what their scouts have been doing um, at home on their own and start uh, the wheels turning on when we can get back together, uh, what are the first things that we want to accomplish. Um, as far as events that we've done online through Facebook, we've, uh, there was a bingo that was put out by council. Um, we also built one specifically uh, for our scout pack uh, that was focused on emergency preparedness, conservation, um, and different skills to fit across all the den levels. Um, so they could earn, that would help them earn other awards possible that are out there. Um, we've participated in the virtual 5K um, with a lot of our scouts have done that through the Kentucky Council. They were putting something on like that. So, um, a lot of us have gone out and done some um, walking to get that going, keep their legs moving, keep them happy. Um, we have talked at our leaders meeting, we talked about taking the opportunity to start a, a 50 mile challenge for our scouts. So if they can accumulate 50 miles throughout the rest of the year, we'll give them some sort of award. Uh, we were talking about walking sticks. Um, for some of the scouts and the leaders that, or their parents that take them out. Um, what else do I have here? Um, a lot of this, oh, we're working on, a, we're still working on a patch. We'd like to put a patch together for council if we could come up with a great idea and uh, uh, have, have a patch for all of the units to be able to purchase um, from council and then they could give it out to their scouts who participated in events during uh, this lockdown situation. Um, but we still haven't figured out all the ins and outs of that and, and we're working on it. We'll come up with a design and if it works out, then hey, it works out. And I think that's pretty much all I got to talk about. Okay, thank you. And next we have Clint Kilpatrick from Essex Junction Troop 624. Hi guys, how are we doing? Uh, so 624, uh, they've been really busy. Uh, I'm really proud of these guys. Uh, I get emails from several scouts uh, asking to do merit badges through the Florida Council and among the other ones mentioned. So. Uh, scouts have been engaged. I almost want to say we have better attendance uh, on Zoom than we do in person when we had means in person. Uh, you know, the pesky sports and uh, scouts has always been the biggest challenge 
it seems. So uh, kudos for that anyway, uh, you know, make the best out of the situation. Uh, we've had a lot of advancement. We are gearing up to have a virtual court of honor uh, next week uh, in place of our March court of honor that we originally planned. So that uh, a lot of work's gone into that. One scout in particular has done the planning on that for advancement. They've done an excellent job. Uh, a lot of planning, a lot of, a lot of work has gone into that. Uh, looking forward to that. In addition to that, we did hold, hold OA elections, as uh, Shannon mentioned earlier, and we are preparing to include a, a call out type of uh, ceremony in with a court of honor next week to, to call out those that have been elected. So that's exciting stuff coming up. Uh, David mentioned a virtual campfire. We've actually started uh, some plans on that in our troop uh, just to shake up the, the Zoom meetings. Uh, a lot of advancement, a lot of merit badge work, uh, citizenship in the world is currently happening with one of our uh, committee members. And uh, the, the McCullens have done an excellent job with the first aid as well. Uh, we do have uh, May 1st, I think we're gonna do a scout trivia kind of game meeting. Uh, and this past Friday, we actually did uh, in place of our fun and game night at the church sleepover where no one sleeps, we did uh, a shorter four hour block Friday of uh, of games and movies via Zoom, which was uh, seemed to be a good hit too. Uh, I think that's about all we have right now. What's going on uh, for immediate things coming up? What about the what about the pet show? Oh yeah, how can I forget? We did a uh, we did a pet show this past meeting at the end of our meeting, which was a uh, a lot of fun. Kind of a Q and A roundtable. If your pet was willing to be on camera. Uh, and uh, each scout would uh, introduce their pet or stuffed animal and, and say something about them. Uh, that was, uh, it was kind of fun. I brought a lot of smiles to the screen. Yeah, that was, that was a lot of fun. So was our game night. Um, thank you, Clint, for talking about what Troop 624 is doing. Up next, I have an update from John Dyer, who is, the Sunrise Camp director, he um, said that he is thinking about everyone and their families and hopes that everyone is safe and healthy. The Sunrise Camp staff is preparing for program and if anyone has any questions, please feel free to email or text him. And he said that he would put his information on the Camp Sunrise Facebook page. He is currently at work as a nurse and I wanna thank John for all of his work that he has been doing both for Sunrise and in the medical field. Next, we have updates from Dave McAllister, who is our council president. Thanks, Shannon. Uh, thanks for putting this together. This is great. Uh, good evening, everyone out there. Um, I hope that uh, first and foremost, uh, everybody is safe, healthy, and happy uh, as you can be in these, uh, these times. Um, right off the bat, I, I just want to praise uh, the the council leadership team. Um, you know, you've heard from most of them tonight already, um, but um, you know, we've we've been on uh, a lot of a lot of calls, Zoom meetings, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, and the, these folks are spending hours and hours and hours trying to. Uh, respond to all of the the changes uh, daily, uh, and and how this is impacting, uh, you know, Green Mountain Council, uh, the district, the unit programs, the scouts and their families. And so, I, I just want to put a big shout out, uh, you know, to them and and express my appreciation. Um, you know, Ken, the the advancement stuff and and your flexibility and understanding that you know that's changing constantly. You know, the information we had three weeks ago is not the same that we have now. Uh, so I appreciate that. Dave, Clint, John, Leslie, Alice, and Judy, um, you know, trying to plan camp is a, is a tall task in itself. Trying to do it right now uh, with the level of ambiguity and uncertainty that is, is surrounding us. Um, you know, God bless you and, and the efforts that all of you are putting into that. Um, Leslie, uh, you know, your, your commissioner team and 
Um, you know, certainly the, the level of uh, commissioner support has not got easier over the years, um, but uh, this is even a, a, a greater uh, challenge. So, you know, I, I appreciate all that, that you and your crew are doing, uh, you know, to keep, keep scouting units meeting and going. Um, Fred Lord, I don't know if he's on tonight or not, but, you know, Doc Lord, uh, Clint mentioned him earlier, has been uh, very tuned in and involved with us in terms of medical um, updates and recommendations in terms of our camping stuff. Um, you know, not, nothing's going to happen at camp around health and safety without Doc Lord signing off on it. And, uh, you know, he's very tuned in to, to what's going on with the CDC and, and the Vermont Department of Health. So we're in good hands there with, with Fred and his recommendations. Uh, again, I don't know if he's on, but Bernie Isabel. Uh, Bernie's been instrumental in, in helping us with uh, a financial analysis uh, and, and development here. Ed mentioned that we, we applied and got the payroll protection program and, and Bernie, Ed, and Lori really did the heavy lifting on all of that. And, and uh, you know, we're, we're in a better place because of their efforts. Um, and then certainly Ed and his team at the service center, um, you know, for continuing to be uh, respectful and responsive of all the recommendations as a business, but also being really thoughtful uh, and considerate of, um, you know, the needs of units and, and finding creative ways to keep scouting going uh, and serving our kids. Um, this COVID-19 thing is, is, you know, unprecedented. Um, I'm, I'm not sure any of us on this call can necessarily recall something like this. Um, that, uh, that has such an impact in such a, uh, a swift manner um, that has really, you know, in many ways debilitated a lot of the things that we're used to um, and enjoying. And scouting certainly is one of those things. Um, you know, I was just on a, a, a den meeting last night with my tigers and we were talking about, you know, this is the great time of year where the, the snow's gone and your den meetings get to be outside again and they're fun. Um, and we were looking forward to doing our, our tiger jungle and, um, it, you know, so they're doing it at home, but it's, it's just one of those things where, you know, kids aren't playing baseball or spring soccer or lacrosse. Um, you know, the kids are missing out on a ton of stuff. I know that as adults, we've always all been impacted with work or, you know, having to become school teachers at home or whatever our roles have, have had to be. But, uh, you know, let's not forget that, that these kids are missing out on some really amazing life-changing experiences. So the more we can do for them in scouting, um, you know, the better off that they're gonna be. Um, you know, I, I always think about this is like, <clears throat> what better opportunity for the premier youth serving organization uh, on leadership to, to get involved and to make a difference right now. Um, and, you know, a lot of you have talked about uh, how you're engaging your units online, uh, through virtual meetings and contacts. Um, but again, I, I just think about there's other ways that we can encourage our kids, our families to be involved and make a difference, whether it's making masks, it's, uh, you know, make, making uh, cookies or meals or something for, uh, you know, our frontline workers. Uh, there's just a lot of great ways, writing letters and cards and things to folks who are uh, quarantined in nursing homes. There's a, there's a lot of great ways that we can promote scouting and service. And, um, and I think that this is just a tremendous opportunity for us to show what we're made of. Um, our flexibility, adaptability, the patience, dedication, um, you know, of service, it just, it really highlights and promotes the scouting values. And, you know, I just want to acknowledge that I don't think any of us would say there's anything ideal about what we're all dealing with right now. Um, you know, personally, professionally, in our volunteer lives. Um, but, you know, nothing great was ever accomplished without enthusiasm. Uh, and I think that that's something that we need to keep in our mind as leaders. It's something that we need to continue to promote. Um, you know, it's, it's really easy right now to talk about all the things that we can't do, that we're not doing, that won't work, that it's really hard, um, you know, to, to rise above that and be a leader and talk about the things that we can do. What can we, how can we impact a kid? Uh, how can we uh, keep that young man involved or that young woman excited about what lies ahead in the scouting adventure? So 
on that note, I, I just want to urge all of you to be thinking now about when when the when the cloud is lifted and the green light is given, what are we going to do to get these kids engaged immediately in something outdoor, physical, adventure based, um, and and at all levels? And I just I urge you to think about that because um, you know I don't know about you, you know we we're trying virtual meetings. We're not getting every kid uh, checking in. I'm doing some some reach outs and some personal phone calls to as a den leader, um, just to make sure that those kids are staying connected to us. I think it's imperative that we don't let these kids slip away, um, that we don't let them think that that as scout leaders we didn't make an effort um, to stay connected and let them know that we're thinking about them and their family, um, that we have a service to provide. You've all talked about some creative and unique ways to do that. Um, I think it's just, it's necessary for us to make sure we're making those efforts and keeping them excited, letting them know. We had to cancel our Pinewood Derby in my pack. We're gonna do it the first thing in the fall. We're gonna do our Pinewood Derby. We're gonna have a recruitment event around it. We're gonna, we're gonna do things to get kids excited. We're still working on family camp, fishing derby, things like that. We're doing everything we can to give them something to look forward to, to let them know that, you know, scouting is going to be back. We're going to be outside. We're going to engage and we're going to have fun while learning values. <coughs> um, at the same time, I was on a conference call on Friday. Our regional director had mentioned things like, hey, you know, you're stranded at home. Why not work on family life? Why not work on home repairs? Why not work on some of these other things? It's a great opportunity for all these Scout BSA age kids. Um, so again, if you're, you're in your unit and you're struggling for creative ideas, look, look there at least. Start, start with the things that they're doing at home already um, or could be potentially doing at home already. Um, uh, Ed mentioned the PPP or the Payroll Protection Program. Um, you know, that, that's really a, a big breath of fresh air to, to help the council during this time. Um, but I just, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, uh, you know, this, this thing came at a time where, um, you know, our FOS presentations were impacted, a lot of unit uh, and council spring fundraisers and special events were impacted. Um, and so, you know, if any of you have the means if you know people that have the means um, throughout this difficult time, I would just encourage you to keep scouting uh, in your hearts and think about, uh, you know, being generous in some capacity. And whether that's Green Mountain Council or it's helping a kid get to scout camp um, or whatever it may be, I, I think that those of us that can should um, during these times. Um, NYLT, uh, you know, again, another summer camping program. Uh, we got a great team assembled. Uh, the youth staff is, is uh, stellar, uh, outstanding. They're going to deliver a great program. So if you have Scout BSA youth out there, um, please, please, please consider NYLT. Um, if you have questions, email me, let me know. Uh, but again, that's scheduled for August 9th to 14th um, at uh, Camp Sunrise uh, this summer. Um, I do want to just take a minute um, and congratulate Ed McCollin formally. Uh, on his uh, retirement this summer from the Boy Scouts of America. Um, Ed served uh, the Boy Scouts uh, proudly as a professional uh, for well over 30 years. Um, you know, I've personally known Ed over the last 10 that he's been here in Vermont and working with him as a member of the Key Three. Uh, and, uh, and I'll tell you, there, there's, there's nobody that loves the program more uh, than Ed McCullen. So, uh, you know, Ed, I appreciate all, all your time, your effort, your service. Um, it is definitely not a eight to four job, as you well know. Um, and, uh, and you've really helped uh, us get through a lot of different adversity here in the county. So congratulations on, on whatever your next uh, journey will be. Um, and just make sure you leave me your address so I can send you an FOS card uh, every year. Um, so I guess in closing, uh, the other thing that I, I wanted to just take an opportunity to do, um, which wasn't really expected in this capacity, uh, I was hoping uh, and looking much more forward to addressing all of you in person, but um, 
this is sort of my last official hurrah as uh, your council president. Um, we would uh, normally be passing the baton at our annual meeting, which was scheduled for this upcoming Sunday. Um, we have postponed that just a hair, uh, but we will be conducting that meeting uh, in the middle of May, uh, at which time I will be uh, stepping down as president and uh, Dan Richardson, who's on the call here, uh, will be um, assuming the president responsibilities. Um, you guys are lucky. Uh, Dan, Dan's an outstanding guy. Uh, he's an Eagle Scout, loves the program. Um, he's got a lot of great ideas, new energy, um, you know, and, and really a man of integrity. So uh, you guys are all going to be in really good hands with Dan. And, and uh, you know, Dan can have a, a moment there after I'm done. But, um, but I, I guess, you know, usually when, when I get up and give like the State of the Union or the president talks about these things, uh, you know, it's really about celebrating volunteers. It's about recognizing volunteers at our council meeting um, and celebrating, you know, really the strengths of scouting, the successes of scouting, um, which, you know, there really are more of those than there are the other things. And, um, you know, I, I just think about, uh, you know, commercials I see now, uh, uh, negativity, uh, uninformed people, um, you know, talking, talking about this wonderful program. And, um, you know, I just think it's so important that what we do and what all of you do every day as a den leader, a scout master, a district chair, whatever your, your role, your commitment in scouting, it is so critical uh, to changing the lives of kids and, and doing that in the right way. Um, I'm a product of it. Uh, I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for my scout leaders, uh, the people who invested their time in me, their belief in me, um, <clears throat> gave me the, the structure that I needed when I needed it, but were also my biggest fans and, and cheerleaders. And, uh, and I know that uh, you know, I'm friends with all of them still today. Some of them have, have moved on from this earth um, and I think about them often. Um, and so, you know, never, never let the frustration that you may have with, you know, a council policy or a district event or, you know, an FOS presentation or, a, you know, the soggy eggs at camp, never, never let that um, discourage you from what really is important. And, and that is focusing on these young people um, because they need us. They, they need all of us. It, it takes a village, um, you know, many of them uh, are, are in scouting because they're looking for something that they can't get anywhere else. And, and we, can never, we can never lose, lose sight of that. Um, you know, in my time uh, in, a, in the key three here for the last 10 years, <clears throat> I think about kind of the historic nature of scouting over the last decade. And, um, you know, we celebrated a hundred year anniversary of scouting in America in uh, 2010. Um, we opened a new uh, site, the summit, uh, and hosted a couple of jamborees, including a world jamboree last year. Um, you know, we've removed all of the, the membership uh, criteria barriers uh, for both youth and adults. Um, we've ushered in a new dawn with with young women being participants in our traditional program as well as some of those um, other programs and certainly now we're on the cusp of uh, you know COVID-19 and <laughs> and you know and I just uh, I have to say uh, you know there's no better group of people that I would have rather faced these challenges with um, than uh, Ed and and the members of the executive board uh, and executive committee and uh, uh, most of you know who you are, and, and I've shared those thoughts with you privately, and we'll probably do so again in the near future. But um, you have my, my deepest gratitude, um, my personal uh, pledge um, to never, never forget our friendship um, and, um, you know, and our love for scouting. And uh, with that, I'm going to stop talking for a minute.
and uh, just say good night and good scouting to all of you. And if there's a question, I guess I'll answer it. Otherwise, let Dan may be happy to say a few words as the incoming president. Okay. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Okay. Well, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. I want to first of all thank Dave McAllister for a number of years of uh, just unbelievable service to the council um, and the example of his leadership. Uh, I feel that I am walking into a giant set of boots uh, that he's leaving behind. And um, Dave has been fantastic to work with. He's been such a wonderful leader for the council. I think we're all very lucky and certainly uh, if you have the opportunity and I've had the opportunity to thank him for his service, please make sure that you thank Dave for his service and please encourage him not to run away to the corners because I'm going to need him in the next coming year and uh, we'll be relying upon his wellspring of, of endless knowledge and resources. So for everyone, my name is Dan Richardson. Uh, as Dave mentioned, I'm uh, an Eagle Scout, a lifelong scouter. Uh, I grew up in Ohio and I've lived in Vermont for 20 years. Um, I've been uh, active on the executive board for about four, four and a half years. Um, a lifelong uh, believer in the, the value of scouting and what scouting does for kids and for how it promotes uh, the leadership, the civic virtues, the self-reliance um, that are so important right now. Um, this is an interesting period and uh, we've said it, many of us have said it tonight, it's a really interesting period to be in scouts, to be anywhere. Um, but I think we need to think of this in two phases. Right now we're in phase one, which is being driven by the existing issues and the public health emergency. We've had to camp, cancel uh, you know, the camporee, we've had to cancel um, the ordeal. We've had to cancel meetings. We should be here in person. You should be hearing me speak uh, in person, but we're on Zoom. Uh, but there's going to be a second phase, and that's going to be a long term as we adjust to some of these things and to deal with families that are going to be in crisis, at uh, kids that need us more than ever. Uh, and so that's going to be the big challenge that we're going to be facing. Uh, and we have to get ready and we have to prepare ourselves one thing uh, that's going to be really important, and that's something that we've expressed all along in the leadership, which is that summer camp or camping, outdoor experiences are so important. And we're going to fight so hard to make sure that kids have the opportunity to come to summer camp and to have those experiences. This is also another good time to bring in new members. You know, we are, we know everyone here knows the value of scouting and knows what it does for themselves for families, for youth, the values that it teaches, the skills that it teaches. Um, but there's a lot of people that have been cooped up all spring um, that will probably want to have their kids get out and to learn these skills. And I think there's a great opportunity here that if we can pre present a channel for them, uh, it can really have an impact on our community and we can provide that service that we want to and that we should be providing. So. I'm looking forward to working with everyone. I really appreciate uh, the support that people have given uh, me so far on the beginning of this journey. And I recognize a lot of you from Wood Badge this past fall, and I had a great time there. And uh, I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Um, I look forward, if you have any concerns or questions or ideas, uh, I have an open door, open ears. I'm always willing to learn. It's going to be a lot of changes. As Dave mentioned, you know, not only are you getting a new president, but you're getting a new scout executive. And we're working on, um, we're working on all of the, uh, the details that go into that and making that selection and trying to think what is the best thing for the council, for its future, for our members. So we really look forward to it. And I look forward to working with all of you. I look forward to meeting all of you that I haven't met before um, face to face. And I really appreciate this opportunity. Uh, Shannon and Kevin, thank you so much. And uh, I'll go on mute because I think I'm standing between you and the end of this meeting. Thank you, Dave and Dan for speaking. I do wanna point out that at the moment, almost all of the Facebook comments that I can see are either, thank you, Dave, thank you, Ed, good luck, and welcome, Dan.
<laughs> the last thing on the agenda is some program updates from Ken Bell. Yeah, just a couple quick things I wanted to uh, cover. Um, first, I want to jump back to advancement real quickly. Uh, reading through my emails, I saw that there was a, an email from Ed. Arlene has put together a list of uh, councils that are offering online merit badges. Uh, they have websites, dates, uh, uh, times, uh, length of time to complete the merit badge. Uh, I've asked Dave and Leslie if they could get that posted out on the website so all of our leaders have access to that. Uh, but it'll help you at least with those programs. A um, couple of things around program, uh, you know, Dave touched on, on the fact that they were not able to have their, their Pinewood Derby. I know district Pinewood Derbies were canceled. We are actively working, trying to find ways to uh, re-engage around those activities. Uh, a lot of scouts have missed out and, and uh, have expressed some disappointment in that. Uh, so uh, I've charged our district, Three Rivers, to, to start looking at some opportunities maybe in the fall. Uh, I would encourage all the other districts to do the same. That is a staple program uh, that all of our scouts look forward to. And I think that we should try to continue to, to offer that in any way, shape, or form. So Dave, uh, congrats to you know, looking to do that in the fall with your, with your group. Um, any other opportunities that you guys have around activities to keep the kids engaged, you know, you got to move forward with those. Uh, camping opportunities. Kids are going to be really looking forward to getting out uh, and getting some camping in, I think, when all of this is behind us. I know the summer program is there, but we, you know, we really got to take advantage of, of where we live and what we can offer our scouts. So get out there and, and do some camping and other activities. Um, Another thing I wanted to mention um, is uh, the Silver Beaver nomination process. Uh, we had uh, four very strong candidates this year, uh, Chris LaFrance, Scott Herring, uh, uh, um, Peter Massari, and uh, Paul Mergens. Uh, unfortunately, we can only award two uh, uh, nominations, um, and this year's recipients are uh, Peter Massari and Paul Mergens. Um, how that's going to be recognized at this point, I'm not quite sure. I know that the key three have been talking about how we're going to do that. Um, you know, Peter, uh, we, we have given him the option to do it how he wants to do it. And we may end up doing that down at sunrise and talking with Carrie, uh, but uh, waiting to hear more about what the council decides they want to do and how they want to present that. So uh, I think we'll be flexible given, given the situation, but we do want to recognize them. So congratulations to, to those recipients, to uh, the others who did not receive it this year. Highly encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. Uh, you got recognized, uh, submissions went in, nominations went in, just need you guys to keep working at it. And hopefully, uh, hopefully next year you got another shot and we'll, we'll get you guys in there uh, eventually. So um, thank you. Uh, that's all I have for tonight. And thank you, Dave. And thank you, uh, Ed. Okay, so that concludes <clears throat> the council roundtable. I specifically want to thank all of the presenters for attending. I also want to thank everyone on Facebook who is watching <clears throat> and for bearing with us with all of the early technical issues. And this will be recorded and is going to be posted. So thank you very much for joining us. And with that, we'll say goodbye and I'll end the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, thank you everyone for attending and talking. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Stay healthy, stay safe. <laughs>